Um, Malcolm, it seems like you're very comfortable just slicing to the hoop, closing out games like that. How, how comfortable is it being in that late lineup and then obviously to get a, a, a win in a close game like this after losing those two overtime games to Cleveland? I'm comfortable, man. I'm, I'm comfortable finishing games. Um, I've really been doing it my whole career. When I was in Milwaukee, I was finishing games. When I was in Indiana, the ball was in my hands and I was finishing games. Um, but now it's really the big stage. And uh, I'm playing with great players that, that definitely help me close the game out. My job when I'm on the floor at the end of games is to keep us organized and to get the ball into JT and JB's hands um, and you know help them create advantages to close the game out for us. Uh, you, you've talked about transitioning to this offense. I see kind of Joe pointing you in different directions at times, trying to figure out the spacing and everything, I assume. Just where are you at in that process, you think, of fitting in on and off the ball with this group? Um, I, I'm, I'm learning every game. Um, it's going to be a learning process every game. Teams play us differently every night. Um, they're really locked in on, on JT and JB. Um, but for me, it's, it's about playing off of those guys and making the game easier for them. And, um, you know, relieving some of that pressure on them. What did you see on the play where you set up Jalen for the slam there? Um, I was actually stuck. It looked like a great assist. I was stuck. Um, he made a great cut to the basket and <laughs> did what he does. You talked um, after that last Bulls game about bringing the bench guys together and kind of having a message for them. What, what was the general message you kind of gave them then, and what did you think about the bench group as a whole in this game against the Bulls? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been telling them, we got to be the best second team in the, in the league. we got to embrace that. We are the second team. We're going to be the best in the league, um, and we're going to take full ownership of that. I thought it was unacceptable how we came out when we were in Chicago. The first team came out and um, played great, played a great you know, first seven, eight minutes, and we came out and, and really laid an egg. So. I did not want to repeat that, especially against the Chicago team. This is a really good team um, that we're going to have to play probably, you know, most most definitely in the playoffs as well. Um, so I want us to be prepared and, and learn how to beat this team and beat good teams down the stretch, um, especially coming in and just being ready and, and adding on to what the first team's doing. And what did you think of that in this one with, you know, Sam, Luke, obviously? I, I, thought, I thought the second team was great. I thought we provided the lift, thought we came in and we were down a few points. We got us back in the game, um, maybe a, you know, a couple point lead. Uh, and I thought we kept the, the energy and momentum and the pace all night. Malcolm, how much pressure are you feeling in those late game situations now in the role that you're in? Are you feeling like your legs are a lot? you know, uh, pressure in the, to come in those moments you are and, and finish out games in the role you're in this year? Uh, I mean, there's there's definitely pressure, um, but it's not pressure I haven't felt or I'm not. Huh? Oh, pressure. Oh, I feel I feel incredibly fresh because I'm not having to do a lot. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a top two, top three option. So, you know, when that's the case, you you're not burned out by, by the end of the games. Um, or even after the game. So I can come into every game and I'm fresh. I have fresh legs. Um, it's, it's definitely a benefit, you know, for me coming off the bench um, and, you know, not playing 40 minutes a game and, and taxing my body out. Thank you. Yep, thank you.